Shall we go on to this plant? That sounds like a great idea. All right. Now, we have this plant, and you brought in, whose plant is this again? Yes, you brought in a pot, right? I did. Yeah, okay. So this is a plant. How long have you had this plant? A long, long time. She's had this plant a long, long time. How many years? How many years? 25 years. 25 years. Excellent. How long has it been in this pot? 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get points for honesty. Yes. yes it's and not in bad, I mean, it's healthy. It is not in bad shape for a plant who's been in the same pot for all this time. Mm. So we're going to liberate it from its um, wooden post here. And, and these are plants that, because they are vining plants, you need to address that in some way. Now, some people let them vine, and then pretty soon they're starting to trip the dog and you know grab small children as they go by. Um, some people train it up a wall. And in fact, I was in the Sandwich Town Hall recently, where there is one that goes up the wall, over the doorway, around the corner, <laughs> <laughs> and into the next room, yeah, literally. That's great. <laughs> literally. So um, you can wind it around an obelisk. You can put it on a piece of bark. Or you can periodically prune the ends off and root them mm -hmm. and either start another plant for yourself or someone else or toss them out. Yeah. So pruning it is also an option. So what do you think, what, how, how does this plant look, Ellen? Um, I think it looks like it needs a day at the spa, mm -hmm. and by that I mean just some good grooming. Okay. I think it's perfectly healthy. I think it's insect free. It's nice and clean. I see new growth on it. It is not too wet, and this is a plant, again, that in nature is an epiphyte. It grows out. It grows on other trees, and it, it likes to dry out between watering. I think it needs fresh soil and, and some pruning but I think it's absolutely worth saving. Let's take a look at its roots. I system. will also say this pot is way too big. <laughs> okay, so do we have, do we have, you know what we well, can this do? This was her old. That's the old, no, but honestly, this is the old pot. Yeah, but I'm, I, think, I think this plant's gonna be happier in clay. I don't know if you, um, if it's gonna be, if that's too heavy for you, but I think it would be happier in clay. How do the so, roots feel? Is that all right? The roots feel fine. You can see how they've gone around and around mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we could put it back in this, but it's not beautiful. <coughs> so, all right. What I will do is while you talk about grooming, I'm going to go and grab a pot Great. that's going to fit this. Okay. All right? All right. So, I will talk about good grooming because I know so much about it. Um, I, my plants are better groomed than I am. Yeah. No. <laughs> When, you know, if, if this were my plant, I would probably not restake it. Um, but if you want it to be a vertical, then we can restake it for you. I'm pulling this piece out because you see it's got this long expanse here with no leaves on it. So that's what we want to get rid of. I'm going to cut that and it may result in, oh, there's a really long stretch with no leaves on it. And, and this is what we're going to get rid of. Now, another thing you can do if you want to keep these pieces is you can run it around the inside of the pot and stick it into the, um, stick it into the potting soil with a paper clip or a hairpin. But I think since we're here and we've got the shears, we might as well get rid of this. And that's going to leave us with some cuttings we can either pot up or we may stick them back in the pot that we've got right here. You could braid or macrame. You could. But, <laughs> but, but don't. Please don't. <laughs> All right. My father-in-law used to kind of braid plants when they got too long, so yeah. he was pretty good at plant macrame. I'm just going to cut this, and we're probably going to cut it again another. Okay. Yeah. Now, these could be rooted, right? Mm -hmm. So this little plant here, you could take and, and look. They've got it's got it's got roots starting all along yeah. that stem. This is one that you wouldn't even need rooting hormone for. Right. You could just put it right in some uh, seed starting mix in a little pot, mm -hmm. keep it damp for a little while, and it would root. So if you want to take these home, we're going to pile them all over there. For you, you could even stick them in water. You but could even stick these in water. Some plants, you really need something like this rooting powder, mm -hmm. okay? And this is a, a good thing to have as part of your house plant rescue kit. Yes. And we'll talk about that more later on. Other plants, you can stick a stem in water and it will grow. 
Some plants, if you stick a stem in water, they will just rot. <laughs> so and sometimes they will root, and then when you try and transfer them to soil, they don't do well. And that's because the kind of roots that grow in water are different than the kind of roots that grow in soil. It absorbs water differently, and it absorbs nutrients differently. And the, the transfer from one to the other is not always easy for the plant. Now, we're not going to use orchid mix for no. this pot, no, right? Not. We are going to use some regular potting soil. And because this has been in the same pot as we now know for 25 years, I'm going to actually, um, and look at this, this is the bottom of the stake. It rotted. That yeah. rotted. Yeah. It was in the soil. So yeah. we're going to actually yeah. oh. take off some of this, you know, yeah. and, old soil and yeah. refresh and, it. And you can kind of see that it, it comes away easily. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll just knock some of that away. And how much do you want to knock away, Ellen? Um, I mean, this is almost a piece that wants to fall, and I think let that... Let it fall. Let it fall, but it's got a, a sizable portion of the plant with it. Well, we can save the roots and... Uh... <laughs> I, you know, I'm sorry, but this is what I would... I would give me... Give me that smaller pot. I know you went and got the big one. What? This is too big? Yes, I think so. Look at the root mass that's left. Can you guys all see how little root mass is left? I know, but look at the plant mass. I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you. That's the one? Trust me. See, I'm I will you. trust you. Right. I will trust you. I promise you. I'll trust you next time. <laughs> or not, that's okay. What? Pardon me? It is, actually, often. Um, remember I said, use the word epiphyte before? In nature, this grows with the roots clinging to a tree, so it doesn't have a large root ball that is used for anchorage in the ground. So it's, it's not at all surprising for this to have a small Now there system. may be other plants here, right, that we might have taken out of an old pot like that and they would be so congested with roots that they would need that bigger pot. Yeah. All right, it's just this particular plant doesn't have that amount of root system. Now, we don't have a shard to put over the drainage hole. What do you think about using? I think you should never put anything over a drainage hole. All right. And the reason I think that is that if you look at every plant that's growing in our greenhouses, every plant in the nursery, there is not a rock or a shard or a coffee filter, nothing over the holes. And the reason is commercial growers know that it's bad for plants. There you have it. You want the water to go right out that drainage hole because that's what the drainage hole is for. Yeah. So let's just put the soil let's, in. Let's do and it. And commercial growers know that the soil doesn't come out the bottom hole of the pot. That's what people are worried about. Yeah, they're it afraid it'll wash away. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't. All right, we'll put a little bit in there. Okay. Here I got disposable gloves thinking that I we know. might want them, but But that's because no. we're real gardeners, so we don't care if our hands get dirty. Well, we're also a little forgetful, so we forget <laughs> that we brought it. Don't, I was trying to spin it. I have a question about that drainage. I was always taught that she put gravel or stone. That ah. is a great, great question. She said she was always taught that you put gravel in the bottom. And that used to be what we were told to do. That's what I was taught too. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's one of the myths that's in my book. Oh, tell them about the name of your book. Yeah, and Coffee where for Roses. Yeah. Well, um, it's Coffee for Roses, one of the big myths that's hard to kill in that book is that there needs to be rocks in the bottom of the pot for drainage. Mm -hmm. Actually, the rocks are bad for plants. Bad. They are bad for plants. Yeah because the plant's roots grow down. You saw with this plant, the, the roots were at the bottom going around and around. And they don't stop when they come to a layer of rocks or whatever else is in the bottom. And so if you put rocks in the bottom, the roots end up where there's no, nothing for them. There's no water, there's no nutrition. It's bad for plants. And once again, I would say to you, every single plant that you buy in a greenhouse or a garden center, there isn't a rock or a shard or a pebble in the bottom of those pots because commercial growers know that it's bad for plants. Mm -hmm. So this is a myth that we really have to kill, all yeah. right? And it's still and you're lingering. all going to help you know, us out we, here. We all learned this. Yes, question. Yes. Um, well, that entire pot is made up, I mean, the potting medium in the orchid is entirely chunky, so the water is going to go around that. But that's why I suggest don't just water it with a watering can, actually sit it in so that 
the water can go in through the sides of the pot and each individual nugget of bark can absorb as much as possible. If you do that in a clay pot with bark nuggets, I want to say it's almost impossible to overwater that plant now. Now, there are several things to do with this plant mm -hmm. at this point, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. One thing would be to clip this. If this were my plant, I would prune it here. But if you want us to leave it long, we can leave it long. And we can put a... It's right next to my fireplace. Oh, it's a vertical plant. So she wants a stake. Yeah, you want a stake and you want it back up again. And this, I'm going to just stick right in the pot. Good. Because this will, well, I'm not sure that we have a stake here. So you will Now you tell her. After <laughs> she has allowed us, she has allowed, oh, but you know what you might have? What? Do you have small stakes like this and we could do like a tripod and wind it around that way? We do. You know what? And later we'll get those and we'll put it in and do that for yeah. you. Okay? Okay. So we'll, we'll take care of that later on so that, so that it will be once again a vertical plant. Now, are you going to water this CL? Well, I would water it, certainly, mm -hmm. um, and we can water it for her, Ellen, because we could always put it on a plastic thing okay. for her to take home. And do you, do you want to tell her how she knows it's enough water? Well, what I usually do with a houseplant is I water it well, I let the water come out into the saucer or whatever, right? I let it sit for a few minutes, and then I come back and water it again, all right, so that I know that the entire root ball has been saturated. Yeah. And then I take the water from the saucer or the dish that's underneath and pour it out <laughs> so that it's never sitting yeah. in standing water, yeah. but so that I know it's been well watered. Oftentimes when a plant is dry, there's a space in between the, the dirt ball and the pot. And the first time you water it, mm -hmm. the water kind of runs down that space and you don't realize it, but you're not actually saturating the middle. Yeah. And that's why giving a plant a little lick and a promise of water Isn't is not a good it. thing. Yeah. That's right. Because the roots are only going to grow where there's water. So if you just give it a little sip, the roots are only going to grow in that tiny little top portion. And you want them to grow all the way down through the volume of soil. So as CL said, always water until it comes out that hole in the bottom. Let it sit and then pour it off. All right, we're gonna put these over on the side. Okay. We're gonna get a support for it later and help you with that. This one and this all came together, right? And that goes over here. Yeah. All right. I think... Oh, yes. <laughs> I think yeah. we need to address Here, this. If you, if you step aside, I'm going to get rid of some of this. Okay, just... good. Uh, first of all, I want to call your attention to the white that's on the surface here. And that looks to me like uh, salts from fertilizer. Has this been a plant that's been fertilized over the... Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, because when a plant has been in the same container for a long time, and it fertilizes with synth you fertilize it with synthetic fertilizer, the salts kind of build up. And sometimes you see it on the outside or inside of the pot, right? That's what you see here. And sometimes you actually see it on the surface of the soil. That's a sign that it's time for, a n for new soil on, on, a con on a plant. Is this a plant that's sentimental. <laughs> okay, this wasn't something that was included in your daughter's bridal bouquet or that you inherited from grandma or yeah. anything. Dr. <laughs> Ellen, <laughs> what well, do you think? If it were my plant, I would throw it away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no, sure. I wouldn't save it. I, you know, I, over the years, and I've been growing houseplants for so many years, I have become very unsentimental. When I first started growing, I would try to save everything. But, I, you know, as in life, you need to pick your battles. And um, I'm not sure this is worth fighting for. Now, if, if it... Yes. Okay, let's say, let's pretend that this is a sentimental plant, all right? 
And I would tell you what I would do if this is a sentimental plant. And I think plant. it actually could be saved. Oh, it is going to be saved. Yeah. It, oh, it is, is going, it to, is be going to be saved. Okay, then. It is you going to be saved. You heard it here. Because yeah. <laughs> I want you all to know that if you have a sentimental plant that's even as pathetic as this one, the, there might be hope, yeah. okay? And so we're going to show them. Just don't bring them. it to me, but bring it to CL. <laughs> well, if this were my plant, I would also say goodbye to it. Okay. There's but no, it, doubt, but it could there's be no doubt about it, yeah. okay? All right, I would say goodbye. Good. Right? Uh, because life is short, <laughs> and there are so yeah. many gorgeous plants. You walk into the greenhouse up in front, and there are so many gorgeous plants that will lift your heart. Why make? You're you know, so sad that, every time you look at this. <laughs> that, that there is a time for saying thanks, it's been terrific, bye. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if it is a sentimental plant, we can see it's very root bound, right? And here this disc was put in the bottom for drainage, and where did the roots go? Right. In the bottom yeah. where there's nothing for them. So um, if you do buy a plant that's in a hanging basket like this and you want to keep it over time, you want to take it out of the hanging basket. So if this were a plant that was sentimental, I would say we get rid of a lot of that mm. salty old soil. And, yep. and here we've got a bunch of old stems. Lily has a question. I wonder, is that a, a type of a house plant that would root in water? Um, it's a prayer plant. Prayer plant. It's yeah. a calathea, and it's called a prayer plant because often at night the leaves will move into a vertical. I position. think this might root in water, but since it does have some viable roots here, what I would probably tend to do. That's exactly what I would do. Is bend it like this. Is that what you would do? Well, I'd probably bend it more like this. And put this in the pot, yeah. all right, with fresh soil, and pin this down and put some fresh soil on top. Yeah. And then it would be supported by this main stem while it roots. But you won't see the bare stem. And you won't see the bare stem. And then, but what you will see is you will see the plant recover and start to grow. And when you see that at some point, if there's any of this showing, you could clip it off, mm -hmm. right? I wanna ask a question before you pot it up yeah. again. Let me just take this sure. for a second. Um, you see how this is all very pale and the leaves are small? Um, this is how the leaves are supposed to look. Right. This makes me wonder, was it someplace dark? Down yeah. All right. So, so maybe it was getting heat from the radiator. Maybe it wasn't getting quite enough, the same amount of light. Um, so Often when you see the leaves are dwarfed and not as highly variegated, uh, it's a sign that it's not getting enough light. Yeah. So, so we're going to stick this right here. Does anybody have a paper clip? And uh, yeah, I don't have anything to really pin it down with. But okay. if we had a paper, oh, I know what we could use. We could use uh, that t a couple of those tongue depressors that are over there. You think? Uh, yeah, because I actually don't think it's going to need much. Okay. It's, it stays right. See, it's pretty Say good. Off. It's pretty. Who good. said that? Oh, you have a paper clip? Well, oh, okay, you know, get I'm a paper get clip. The paper clip and get show, a paper yeah. clip and show them. Because that's a really good. Yeah, it's a useful tool. Yeah. All right. So you can unbend so the paper clip. You can see that we've got it, you know, the, the stem is curled in there under the surface of the soil. So, and Ellen is going to unbend the paper clip. You could use a, a bobby pin or a, just a piece of wire from your workshop for the same thing, mm -hmm. okay? And then we're just going to pin it down into the soil and that's just going to hold it in place yeah. while it roots so when you get home you would water this well now you have to try to save this <laughs> you have to. first of all it looks way better yeah. and second of all um we have to see if it really you know works yeah yeah all right let's look at the peace lily a lot of people who has oh. peace lilies at home a lot of peace lilies that's a common plant mm. so let's take a look at that who brought this one in Okay. Don't be embarrassed. I'm not. Okay, good. <laughs> Seems shy when you put your hand up. All right, let's get the old dirt. And when you have it, you know, if you don't want to throw the dirt in the garbage, you could throw it at the edge of your property somewhere. Or compost pile. Or put it in the compost pile. As long as the roots were healthy. That's right, that's right. Well, I see a few things. First mm. of all, mm -hmm. 
Um, there's some browning on the tips and the edges here. Yeah. Okay, um, so that's one condition that this plant has. It also, you know, these leaves are also very small and shriveled. Mm. So what do you think about that, Ellen? Well, uh, the peace lily is a plant that, um, some of the things we've talked about today, we've said uh, the overwatering is their enemy. These are plants that like to dry out between waterings. The peace lily is not one of these plants. That's right. Has anybody here ever seen the peace lily do its drama queen routine? Yeah, flops completely flat. If you don't water your orchid for two days or your pothos for two days, it's going to be fine. If you don't water your peace lily, you come home and it's totally flattened. Um, it looks to me like that may have happened to this. There may be some cold damage. I don't know if it was in a window or if it was touching the glass. That sometimes she says no, okay. Um, and there, this, there again, are, the smallness yeah. of the leaves makes me wonder if, it, if it's getting enough light. Well, and there's and, no flowers, which and, is another. And, and we haven't taken it out of the pot yet. Right. So how long, how, how long have you had this plant? Almost three years. Almost three years, okay. Two. And so no. Two years, all right. Um, and, and I just want to, having brown tips like this, brown edges, this is a common thing that people often see on houseplants. And there are several possible causes. Number one is drying out in between waterings. Okay, that can cause brown tips. Number two, cold drafts from a window in the winter. That can cause this. Hot drafts from the radiator <laughs> in the winter. That can cause this. And finally, fertilizer burn. Mm. Fertilizing a plant when it's thirsty in particular. Now, a big problem about fertilizing is that a lot of fertilizers say fertilize every time you water. And that's because they want you to buy more fertilizer. I often say it's like the shampoo instructions yeah. that say rinse and repeat. Yeah. yeah. Nobody needs to wash their hair twice, right? But they say rinse and repeat because they want you to use more shampoo yeah. and come and buy some more. I'm so more. glad you said that. I always say that. <laughs> and I'm very glad to hear it from somebody else. That's well. right. Yeah. So fertilize every time you water. It's a little too much fertilizer, number one. And second of all, it leads people to fertilize thirsty plants. And I'm not saying that that's what this is. But that's, people should know that that's one thing that can happen mm -hmm. when you fertilize a thirsty plant is you get dried edges. So Ellen's been clipping all these, these leaves off. Because basically, when a leaf is looking like this, not capable of much photosynthesis. And it's never going to be pretty again. And, and it's not going to be pretty. And if it's not pretty and it's not doing the job as the food factory to the plant, mm -hmm. it's better for the plant to clip it off. And the good thing is that when you clip a bunch of these off, that stimulates new growth on the plant. Pruning always stimulates new growth, whether it's your shrub outside your house or whether it's your house plant. Mm -hmm. The plant wants to make more food factories to replace what they've lost. Yeah, it's a response to the cutting off of the tissue. That's right. And there are several of these um, here. Yeah. So I'm now, very curious to see what the roots look like. I think they're going to be OK. I often um, tell people with peace lilies and you know, not to worry about overwatering because for a certain period of time, we sold betta fish here. Oh, did you do that? And they were b these little fish that stay in small things of water, and they came in vases yeah. with a peace lily yeah, on the Yeah, I saw those. those. Have you seen? And the fish living underneath. And the fish living underneath. Crazy. And, and the roots of the peace lily were in pure water, no dirt, and they did just fine. Yeah. So that's the sign that you can't overwater a peace lily. It's a moisture. It's, it but likes you, a moist soil. Yeah, but you can underwater. Absolutely. It, so. Whenever it starts to get dry, if you feel, feel it. if you feel that and and it's dry, the surface of the soil, water it well and just water the whole thing well. I think you know this is the biggest problem people have with houseplants. I believe mm. either overwatering or underwatering. Mm. And right? you know, people often say, "Well, how often do I have to water it?" You guys have asked that question here, and there is no, there's no one answer. It depends on how hot your house is, how dry your house is. How is much it in, sun comes through the window? Yeah, is it in plastic, which is not porous, so it doesn't lose any water through the sides? Is it in clay, so it is porous and it does use wa lose water from the sides? Is it root? Bound. A plant that's root bound needs water more often because, you know, it's so tight that it's hard to hold water. Yeah, around there's the less stem. soil yeah. in there to hold. So there is no one right answer, and you need to become comfortable with sticking your fingers down.
down in there. Now, honestly, it's kind of moist in there. Is it? Okay. It looks dry on the top, but when I go down, you know, to my first knuckle, it's moist. Are we ready to take it out? I, yes, we are. Ah, yes, we the are. grand reveal. <laughs> Let's see what's going on where eyes are not seeing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if, if you sprayed it, say, I think spraying a plant like that to get the dust off and the dirt and everything maybe once a month, uh, if you can, that's fine. You could fine. take a shower with your and, plant. I've yeah. been known to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah, that's, that's the next video. Yeah. No, it isn't. <laughs> um, but I sometimes will put a plant in the shower. You want to be careful that the hot water doesn't come on. <laughs> Good point. And you also want to be careful that it's not frigid cold. Mm. So you want the water to be about room temperature, which to our hands feels tempid, I would say. Yeah. And, and sometimes give a, a, a shower that way. Plants that have shiny foliage like this, all of the plants that come from the rainforest, they love a shower like that because you know, down in the rainforest, it rains every afternoon at 4 yeah. o'clock. And right? it's 95% humidity, so the air is always moist. Other plants like succulents and African violets, they don't love that shower so much. So you probably would want to, you know, at most do that sporadically. Now, the succulents are plants that we put outside for summer camp, in the, and of course it rains and they get washed off then. But they wouldn't do well if it was raining every day. Um, I'm not a believer in misting plants. Me either. Number one, it only raises the humidity for the time the mist is right around the plant. Then it completely evaporates. I like to say if you're going to mist your plants, you need to quit your job because you're just going to be standing there misting it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if it's so dry in your house, you might want a, a humidifier, mm -hmm. um, number one. But, and also, you know, the misting, it, it has the potential to cause leaf spot fungus if you do it a lot. And so I'm not a real, I'm not a fan. No, me yeah. either. Okay, we agree. Yeah. All right. Isn't that nice? So the roots on this look pretty good. Yeah. They look healthy, right? Mm -hmm. um, if this were my plant, Ellen, I would probably just take off a little of this soil and put it even back in the same pot. I would too. And would I'd, you too? Yeah, okay. I would because it's plastic. And I think peace lilies do better in plastic because it keeps the soil more moister longer. Um, and I honestly think this soil looks pretty good. It doesn't. It smells perfectly good. It, there, there was no rot. I think your issues are, are with the leaf tips and if you... Um... And I think probably a, a deeper soaking when you water it. So don't, you know, don't be afraid to, again, come back, saturate it the second time, have it in a deep enough dish so that you can do that. And that's one way I think people go wrong with house plants is um, they don't have a good enough saucer under it so they don't want to overflow the saucer mm -hmm. and they don't want the water to go on their floor and so they're too conservative with the water yeah and so that's bad for the plant i understand you want to save your carpet right but you need to soak that root you ball. need to soak it so yeah. have a deep enough saucer all right i'm going to put a little fresh soil good. in the bottom yeah and, and i'm just and then we're going to pardon um, I, well, I think ideal for a peace lily is morning sun myself. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the whole bright indirect light thing is, is really good for a lot of house plants, especially if you think about, um, as CL mentioned earlier, how plants grow in nature, if you can duplicate those conditions. And if it's something that grows in the understory of a rainforest, it's going to get dappled light. Um, and that means um, some sun. And you won't get it to flower if you don't give it some sun. But the co morning sun is, is a little bit cooler, and um, I think that's going to be better. So and I've found when my peace lilies are getting some direct sun, they flower. Yeah, and that's right. what you want. Yeah. Nobody well, grows it just for the leaves. Right. I would probably fertilize this plant sporadically, you know, a couple of times a year. Yeah, two and or three times a year. Sometimes what I do when I'm repotting a plant like this, I take some organic plant food like rose tone or flower tone or plant tone. You probably have a bag in your garage already, right? Mm -hmm. And you take a small handful of this and mix it up in with, the, with the soil, and that feeds the plant slowly over time. And then if you need to add some synthetic fertilizer, uh, in, you know, after you water it well, 
then you can fertilize it with some synthetic fertilizer. And this is also what we're doing now with the, with the refreshing of the soil. You may hear people talk about top dressing. And, and that's going to also give it a little boost nutritionally as well, because you're putting some fresh, from, some fresh soil in there that's going to have a little nutrition. Right. 